Hey, welcome back. This is the second section in Chapter 5, <clears throat> and in this section we're going to give you some, some uh, uh, identities, four of them in particular, the cosine and the uh, sine, uh, the, the sum and difference formulas for, for those. And uh, we'll start out with the cosine of a difference. We'll, we'll actually prove this one, and then we'll kind of leave the rest, we'll just sort of hand the rest of them to you without proof. Um, okay, so cosine of a difference um, looks like this. Cosine of alpha, Greek letter alpha, minus Greek letter beta um, is equal to, and I call this the couscous formula because it, it begins with couscous, so to speak. It's, it's coast coast, but close enough for me. Um, so it, it's cosine of the first alpha, alpha and then cosine of the second guy beta and then it uses an uh, opposite sign plus instead of minus and then it goes sine sine okay. so sine alpha sine beta we want to prove this so we're going to work with the with the unit circle so note um, our unit circle again uh, x squared plus y squared equals one and the deal with with this thing is you can then talk about any coordinate in terms of sines and cosines right so uh, if I have the like, point right here and this is some angle theta um, this is a right triangle the the point there is located at position um, x comma y okay um, unit circle means the radius is one so, so the hypotenuse of that right triangle is one, and then um, the adjacent side is just your uh, x value, and the opposite side is your y value. Okay. So, as uh, using your definitions for the the uh, trig functions as as ratios, the the right angle right triangle definitions of the trig functions, we notice that uh, cosine of this angle theta here inside the triangle is equal to adjacent, which is x, all over hypotenuse, which is 1. In other words, x is equal to cosine. And then sine of theta is opposite y all over 1, okay, which is just y. And, and so what, what's going on here is that we can rewrite all of these xy coordinates in terms of cosine and sine. Right? So x is really cosine theta, and then y is really sine theta. Okay, so um, we're going to be doing that uh, to 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 get this to prove this identity. Um, we we kind of need to just remind ourselves of all that jazz. Okay, okay. So, um, anyways, let's let's now uh, take get more in gear with what we need to do. Um, we're going to consider uh, we're going to consider two angles, alpha and beta. Okay, that's just like in the formula, cosine of alpha minus beta, right? So we need to consider these two angles. Um, we'll take uh, beta first. So let's say beta is taking us to this uh, location. So this is some angle beta. And then uh, some other angle alpha. So we'll carry us way over to here. And we're still on the unit circle. Okay, so I'm going to maybe have to make my circle a little bigger. Let me uh, erase that second angle so I can kind of fit it inside of the unit circle. Okay. So this will be angle alpha. And we're still inside of a unit circle. Maybe I have to put the circle in a different color. It won't be so weird. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Let's extend this thing. Right. So, so I can kind of give these points names in terms of cosines and sines. So that first point that you see there, you say that's what is this? Cosine of beta, comma sine of beta. And we're going to call this first point P, and then this point over here we're going to call Q. And it's uh, position we can give with uh, alpha, right, in terms of alpha and cosines and sines. So it's cosine of alpha, comma, sine of alpha. Okay. Um, right, so what we really care about is kind of like the cosine of alpha minus beta. So, so I need to kind of deal with, you know, what is alpha minus beta? Um, alpha 
is all the way to this terminal side where Q is, right? Um, so if you subtract away uh, beta, alpha minus beta is, you know, here's, it's all the way over here to, to alpha, and then as you subtract away beta, alpha minus beta must just be this kind of interior part, right, in here. Um, this is alpha minus beta. Sorry, I had to smoosh that in. That's an alpha minus beta. Um, so it's kind of like if, you, if when you're finding reference angles. So if you're in the second quadrant, you got to go 180 degrees minus the reference angle, uh, or, or minus the the uh, angle that's in that quadrant, and then that gives you the reference angle. It's kind of that kind of idea. So so anyways, that's the angle that we're really caring about. And and what we're gonna do is kind of take this little uh, angle, this alpha minus beta, and and kind of rotate it over, okay? Um, and, and then we're going to be really interested in this this uh, distance from Q to P. That's kind of like a little triangle. It's not a right triangle necessarily, but... Okay, so let me draw the picture again, but this time uh, with, with alpha minus beta. Um, I'm going to take that blue triangle and kind of rotate it so uh, the... Um, the triangle with the side OP is on, that OP part is on the um, uh, positive x-axis. Okay, so again, we, we're on the unit circle, you know, um, try to draw it as well as I can, but we've just taken that blue triangle now and rotated it a bit. So, so um, maybe it's over here now. And we, we put the, the OP side on the x-axis. Uh, it's, it's the same blue triangle as what you see in the first pic picture, though. Okay. So, so uh, now this angle here is alpha minus beta. And, but the, the, you know, the points are, are kind of the same. What we're going to be able to do is make some equations out of it. And we're going to be able to, to to show the identity works. So so again, this we're gonna we're gonna have different kind of ways of of representing p and q. So here here's q again, and in this picture, the 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 coordinate associated with q will be then um, cosine of alpha minus beta, comma um, sine of alpha minus beta. And then the original point, because it's on the unit circle, that's just, uh, and it's P, point P, um, that's located at position one, zero. Okay. And uh, again, we're going to be really interested in the distance between Q and P. Okay, so, so from the first picture, um, from the first picture, uh, I'll call this one picture one and this one picture two, from the first picture. Um, so we have, uh, we, we note the distance PQ. Okay, so the distance PQ, let me re, uh, trace it in yellow here, that distance from there to there. Um, I can use the distance formula to, to figure out that distance. Okay, so remember the distance formula, I'm, do, I'm doing that at the top right here now. D is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus uh, y2 minus y1 squared. So if you're given two ordered pairs, you can always figure out the distance between them by using that formula. Okay, okay so in our case, um, PQ is going to be uh, square root of, and then we subtract the x-coordinates, so um, we'll put cosine alpha first, we'll do the q-point, and then minus the x-coordinate of the p-point. So we have cosine alpha minus cosine beta squared, and then plus uh, sine alpha minus sine of beta squared. Okay, um, we're going to do some tricky math now, uh, kind of foil it out first. Uh, so from the, the first expression, uh, first outer and our last, we'll end up with cosine squared alpha minus two cosine alpha cosine betas um, plus cosine squared beta. And then moving on to the second foil, um, we end up with sine squared alpha 
minus 2 sine alpha sine beta, um, finally plus sine squared beta. Um, then we're, we're going to be able to use some identities here, right? So cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is just 1. Okay, so we have 1 from that. But there's also this cosine squared beta plus sine squared beta. So that's another one. So it's like 1 plus 1 is 2. And then we have the minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. And then we kind of stop. Okay, uh, then we're going to work with the second picture and do the same thing. Okay, and again, uh, let me zoom out a little. Hopefully this won't be hard to see. Um, maybe I can kind of do it to the left here rather than having to kind of scroll all the way down. Let me see if I can write it. To the, to the to the right. I mean, okay. So from the second picture, then we have uh, PQ equal to then, uh, and, and again, I'll, I'll um, trace over it in yellow. It's this distance now. But this, the, note the two distances are the same, because all I did was take this kind of triangle and rotate it um, over by beta degrees or beta radians, whichever version we're in, probably radians. Um, and, and, and it's the same triangle, okay? So PQ should be the same in both, and we're going to use that fact at, at the end. Okay, but anyways, just using the distance formula, um, we'll have the square root of, and this time the points... Uh, the x-coordinate of the q point, the first point will be cosine alpha minus beta. And then the first coordinate of the p point is just 1 squared. Okay, and this alpha minus beta is inside the cosine function. Plus, then the um, y-coordinate of q is sine of alpha minus beta. And then minus 0, right? So I, just, I can just write sine of alpha minus beta and then square Okay, I'm going to foil out that first character and see what happens. So we'll end up with cosine squared of alpha minus beta um, plus two cosines of alpha minus beta plus one, and then plus sine squared of alpha minus beta. Okay, and then a Pythagorean identity, we can rewrite this then um, as uh, 1, because this plus this is just equal to 1, plus 2 cosine, oh, there's another one there, so it would be 2 plus 2 cosine of alpha minus beta, okay? okay so again, uh, these two distances are the same, so we should be able to just kind of, kind of take them then and equate them, okay? So equating the distances, they have to be the same, right? Um, equating these two distances, uh, we'll have uh, basically, you know, your square root of 2 minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. And on the other side, we have the square root of 2 plus 2 cosine of alpha minus beta. We're getting there. Um, we're going to square both sides, which I think we can do with no problem. Um, the square root goes away on, on both sides then. We'll have 2 minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta minus 2 sine alpha sine beta equals 2 plus 2 cosine of alpha minus beta. Okay. Um, we can subtract 2 on both sides, and that will, you know, it's going to get rid of uh, the constant part. We'll just have negative 2 cosine alpha cosine beta minus 2, um, and this should be kind of in parentheses, minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. Feels like I made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Um, on the other side, then I have 2 cosine alpha minus beta. And then divide everything by 2, and uh, we're almost there. Uh, cosine beta. 
minus sine alpha sine beta equals cosine of alpha minus beta. Um, so it seems like I, I screwed something up in my journey here. What did I screw up? Somebody's e-messaging me. Um, Oh, it's in here. It should be a minus. Um, when I foiled this guy out, I screwed up. Sorry, just one little mistake there. Um, this should be a minus, and that's going to make all the difference in the world. And this will be a minus. And then this will be a minus. And then this will be a minus. And then, okay, so I think it would be good. Uh, okay, so this is minus, this is minus, this is minus, this will still be minus, and then this is minus. And then if you multiply everything by positive, you'll end up with where we wanted to end up, right? So we'll end up with uh, cosine of alpha minus beta. It gives you the couscous formula. Cosine alpha, cosine beta, plus sine alpha, sine beta. Okay, yay. Okay, um, let's zoom back out, and uh, we, we got our first kind of formula for the day. Okay, so let me view back out. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so let, let's see what we can do with this. Um, Right, so, so the checkpoint one is kind of the first problem. And again, you can always look in the book and kind of follow along here. Um, we want to show that the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to root 3 over 2 using kind of this fact that the cosine of 30 degrees can be rewritten as the cosine of 90 minus 60. Okay, so it's, it's basically uh, apply the couscous formula to this thing, and then we should be able to kind of uh, finagle an answer, okay, for cosine of 30. So, so, okay, so cosine of 30, I note, is equal to the cosine of 90 minus 60, which from the couscous formula is cos 90 cos 90 plus sine 60 sine uh, sine 90, sine 60. Okay, okay so first off, cos of uh, 90 is, of course, 0. So that would be 0. Plus sine of 90 is then um, 1. And then sine of 60 is uh, root 3 over 2. Right? So it would be 0 plus th root 3 over 2, which is equal to root 3 over 2. And that's what we want on the show. So if we want to write it out and better uh, under, make the reader be able to understand it, we note uh, all of that jazz, which is what we want to the show. Okay. 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 Um, let's see what else they got for us in the book. Uh, here's an actual problem from the homeworks section. Uh, find the exact value of the expression, ex uh, exact value of the expression, and this is number three, and they want to know what is the cosine of three pi over four minus pi over six. Okay. Okay, so literally, if you just put these together, I suppose we wouldn't be able to normally find that answer, right? So what is it really? Cosine, if you find a common denominator, I guess it's 12, multiplying the top and bottom of the first one by 3, so you get 9 pi over 12 minus top and bottom of the second one by 2, 2 pi over 12. Um, we're trying to figure out the cosine of 7 pi over 12, in other words. And this, this wouldn't be something normally we, we would know from the reference angles, right? We don't have that those twelfths memorized. But you could use the couscous formula here. Okay, okay so let's, let's have at it. Um, this is cosine of 3 pi over 4 
times cosine of pi over 6, and then plus the sine of 3 pi over 4 um, cosine of pi over 6. Okay. Just to remind ourselves, 3 pi over 4 one, two, is in the second quadrant. Okay, okay. Um, right. So the cosine is negative in that quadrant, so it's negative root 2 over 2 times uh, pi over 6. Um, it's just 1 half. Uh, oops, this should be a sine. I apologize. I'm so sorry. Um, then uh, plus sine is positive in the second quadrant, so we get root 2 over 2. And then sine of, uh, sorry, um, uh, cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. I am falling apart. Um, and then sine of pi over 6 is just 1 half. Okay. Okay, so sorry about that. Okay, and then uh, what is that equal? So that's negative root 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4. Um, and you could combine the numerators over the common denominator if you wish. Um, negative root 6 plus root 2 all over 4 would be a fine answer. Okay. Okay, so it's kind of cool. Normally you wouldn't be able to do that, but there we go. Okay, we could also work with verifying identities again. So verify... The following identity, this is problem 10 in the book, and we have cosine of alpha minus beta all over sine of alpha times sine of beta, um, and we want to show that equals cotan of alpha cotan of beta um, plus 1. Um, right, so so we'll start on the the left hand side. So starting on the left, we have the following: um, cosine. Because I, I, I want to start on the left, so I can take advantage of the couscous formula uh, all over sine alpha sine beta. This will equal then cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta all over um, sine alpha sine beta. Um, we could then split that or butterfly it or fillet it into two uh, expressions. So our answer has two things in it. We want two things. So we can rewrite this then as uh, cosine alpha cosine beta all over sine alpha sine beta plus sine alpha sine beta all over sine alpha sine beta. And then um, the first one, we're, we're gonna, we could split that thing up because I'm kind of looking at my answer up here. And, you know, they want cotans, right? So you can rewrite it as cosine alpha all over sine alpha times cosine beta all over sine beta. And then the next step, we'll, we'll do substitutions on it. And then plus uh, sine alpha sine beta over sine alpha sine beta. That's just one, right? Um, and then that'll equal then our answer, cotan alpha cotan beta plus one which is the right-hand side, uh, which is what we wanted to show. Okay, okay. Um, sadly there are four, you know, four of these type formulas. I was only using the um, couscous formula with a, with a nine, minus sign in there, but there, there really are four of them. Okay, so let me give you the other ones. And uh, again, we'll begin with the couscous. I, I guess I'll put them in the way that the book does them. So first they do alpha plus beta. Um, this is almost the same as, as the original, except now we have to put a minus in between the couscous and the sine sine. So we have cosine alpha cosine beta, this time minus um, sine alpha sine beta. Uh, then secondly, if you have cosine alpha, that's the one, this is the one we've been using. Cosine alpha minus beta is couscous 
plus, so you use the opposite sine, sine alpha, sine beta. And then the other formulas, I call them the same sine formulas, okay? As opposed to the, the other guys, you, you notice you, you start with a plus here, and then you go to the minus. And you start with a minus here, you go to the plus, okay? Um, and these formulas, if you start with a plus, you'll go to a, to a plus. And instead of couscous, instead of being the same, it's just the same sign. The, the uh, actual trig functions uh, alternate. So it'll be sine, cosine. Okay, so sine, alpha, cosine, beta, and then same sign. And then we have uh, sine, beta, cosine, alpha, if you wish. You could also write it cosine, alpha, sine, beta. But... And then uh, the last one, alpha minus beta, equals um, sine alpha cosine beta. Now we have a minus sign, right? Same sign, minus um, sine uh, uh, beta uh, cosine alpha. Okay. okay, so however you memorize these, you got to get them memorized um, for the test, okay? So definitely memorize. Probably on the first page, you know, I'll want to list certain identities again, like the first test. And this will be the, the first kind of major brain dump uh, step that you'll worry about. Of course, you have to have the other identities still memorized. You have to still be able to do reciprocal identity, quotient identity, all that jazz. But you know, these will be new. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's, let's work with some of these. So again, there's these kind of find the exact answer, uh, the exact value. So for example, number 14, um, maybe you're looking for the sine of uh, 15 degrees. So instead, you consider a sine of 60 minus 45, because you could find the, the sine and cosine of 60 and 45 degrees. Okay. okay, so this is same sine formula. You'll have sine 60 cosine 45 minus sine 45. You just kind of change, interchange the angles on um, cosine 60. And then all of those we should be able to know from our reference angles. I, I do everything in terms of, of radians. So that's all you do in calculus mainly, unless you're doing a, like a story problem, you're working degrees. Like in uh, physics, you do more degrees probably than radians, but... Uh, sine of pi over 3 is basically what it is, right? So this would be root 3 over 2. Um, cosine, anything of 45 is basically root 2 over 2. Uh, so this is root 2 over 2. And then this will be 1 half. Okay. Okay. So this will be um, root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. So root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Okay, um, let's do another one. And this is kind of like the reverse problem, okay? So they give you uh, some angles that you might not necessarily be able to do, but if you convert it using the uh, same sign formula, you're going to be able to evaluate it. Okay. okay, so sine, these are degrees, 40 degrees, cosine 20 degrees, plus uh, cosine 40 degrees, sine of 20 degrees, okay? Okay, so going in reverse, um, this is from a same sign formula, so we're thinking sine of 40 plus 20. And, of course, we're able to do that, right? That's sine of 60 degrees, which we just did above. It's root 3 over 2. Okay, so you may think, well, I don't know that because I don't know the particular reference angle, but you can use these identities to backdoor the answer. Okay. Okay, um, unfortunately, there's also some indifference formulas for the tangent. I don't expect you to have these memorized, okay? But they are there, and every once in a while, you'll have to look them up. Some difference for tangent formulas. Okay, so let me just note what they are. And, you know, you don't have to memorize these. Just be kind of familiar with them. Okay, so the first one, uh, tan of alpha plus beta. And that'll be tan of alpha plus tan of beta all over one plus, or it's minus, uh, one minus t 
tan alpha tan beta. Okay. And then the other formula just has a minus in there, so all the signs kind of get changed. So 2 tan of alpha minus beta is going to be tan of alpha minus tan beta all over 1 plus tan alpha tan beta. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's uh, maybe prove one of these to you. Um, so we'll just prove the first one. So proof of the first one. Um, I'll start. In my proof, I'm, I'm, it's kind of like verifying an identity. So I just start on one side and show the other follow. So starting this time, the complicated side is, is not where we want to start. We want to start on the... Uh, tan of alpha plus beta side because we're going to be able to use this, the same sign and the couscous formula is to, to kind of work with it. Okay, so starting on the right, or the, sorry, the left, we note um, tan of alpha plus beta is the same thing as sine of alpha plus beta over sine, cosine of alpha plus beta. And then you could use your, your formulas that we have memorized. So hypothetically, you could always, if you have those four memorized, you can always uh, get these formulas as well. But uh, anyways, so sine of alpha plus beta is then the same sine formula. So sine alpha cosine beta plus um, sine beta cosine alpha all over uh, couscous. So cosine alpha cosine beta, um, opposite sine minus sine alpha sine beta. And then uh, you're going to um, divide everything by uh, cosine alpha cosine beta. Because you you kind of you know you kind of have the answer looking above and you want a one in that first position here. So if you divide everything by that, you'll get that one there at least. So so anyways, what did I say? I'm gonna kind of multiply everything by one all over cosine alpha, cosine beta. So if I do that in the top, I have to do that in the bottom. Cosine alpha, cosine beta. Okay. So you'll end up with um, sine alpha cosine beta all over, because what I'm doing is kind of distributing first, right? All over cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta cosine alpha all over cosine alpha cosine beta all over um, cosine alpha cosine beta all over the same thing. That'll give you a one in that position. Cosine alpha cosine beta um, plus, minus sine alpha sine beta all over um, the cosine alpha cosine beta. Okay, okay so um, in the top we can we kind of have some at least some canceling so this will cancel with this and then sine over cosine is just tangent right so we get tan of alpha for that term um, then the second term the uh, cosine alpha is canceled we get sine of beta over cosine beta which of course is just tan beta And then the downstairs, the first term is 1, like we wanted, minus um, sine alpha over cosine alpha. So that first kind of part right here is just tan of alpha. And then the second part is tan beta. Okay, So we get the answer we were after. Um, tan alpha tan beta, which is basically the, the right-hand side of that first formula. Okay, So which is the uh, right hand side and we're done okay that's that's we verified it okay so anyways uh, we can then use these formulas to do evaluations um, the examples I have were verifying identities so um, let's do a couple three or four identities sure. 
but that we have some some other kind of problem that may come up in the homework that I need to worry about. Okay, so verify the identities. So 38 um, tan of pi minus x equals negative tan x. Okay. Okay. So we can use the tan formula. Um, so in that case, you want to start on the left, right? So starting on the left, I note tan of pi minus x is going to be equal to, um, I need to look up the formula, <laughs> even I forget it. So it's tan of pi minus tan of x all over 1 plus tan of, of pi tan x. Right? Okay, I think that's right. So it's, uh, we were using the negative version, so we want the second formula uh, uh, minus and then plus in the bottom. So minus plus in the bottom, okay. Um, so then tan of pi, uh, it, you know, remember tan is sine over cosine. Sine of pi is zero. Cosine of pi is negative one. Zero over negative one is zero minus tan x. And then I'll be all over one plus zero times tan x. And then simplifying that, we have negative tan x in the numerator all over 1 plus 0, which is 1, which equals negative tan x, which is what we want to show, right? That's that's just um, the right. And that's what we want to show. So we're done. Let's move on to another one. This is 42 in the book. We have sine of alpha plus beta all over cosine alpha, cosine beta. Okay. And that we want to show is equal to tan alpha plus tan beta. Okay. So this time I'm going to start on the left and then work to the right. Okay. So we're going to use the same sign formula and uh, expand that numerator. Okay. So starting on the uh, left hand side, or the left, I note, did I start on the left? Yeah, on the bottom of the channel, okay. Uh, sine of alpha plus beta over cosine alpha, and there's more than one way to do this, but this is just what came to mind. You have the same sine formula, so sine alpha, sine beta, um, plus cosine alpha, whoops, and it's an alternating function, so sorry. It's not sin sin formula, no such thing. Um, so sine alpha cosine beta, and then sine beta cosine alpha all over. We have the cosine alpha cosine beta. Um, we want to end with two terms, so it's probably, you know, this is one of those butterflies. So this equals sine alpha cosine beta all over cosine alpha cosine beta, and there will be a nice cancellation there, plus sine beta cosine alpha all over cosine alpha, another nice cancellation, cosine beta, and I think we'll have it um, then, right? So uh, cosine beta is cancel here, cosine alpha is cancel here, you're left with sine alpha over cosine alpha, which is just tan of alpha, plus sine of beta over cosine beta, which is tan of beta, which is the right-hand side. Which is what I wanted to show anyways, okay? And I'm done. Um, let's maybe look at another one. Oh, this one is cool. Um, this one is actually, may not, it's uh, foreshadowing the future. Your future calculus work uh, minus sine of x all over h. So one thing we, we want to do in calculus is be able to kind of find slopes for, uh, 
for functions. Uh, if you, the slope of the line is constant, right? You remember the slope of the line is a constant rate of change. So right here we have a, like a positive slope. But um, for most functions, they're not going to have a constant rate of change, right? So they'll have variable rates of change. Like here, it's, it's a positive slope. And then over here, it's a negative slope. And then over here, maybe even a zero slope. And then it's positive again. We want to develop kind of a slope formula for an equation that is, has a variable um, uh, rate of change, okay? And that, that new slope equation is, is going to be basically just like it is over here, where you have like y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, except it's going to have functions in it. So it's going to be like sine of x2 minus sine of x1 all over x2 minus x1. And then if you let uh, h equal x2 minus x1, you kind of get what we see in number 50. Okay. So number 50 is basically a slope formula for, for sine, and you'll see that in calculus. Okay, so anyways, um, I want to prove that that thing is then equal to um, cosine x sine of h all over h plus sine of x cosine of h minus 1 all over h. Okay. And that's something you need to do in Calc 1. Uh, for various reasons yet to be shown. Okay, okay so um, what I'm going to do then is start on the left and get over to the right. So starting, starting on the left, because on the left I see I can use my sign, my same sign formula. Um, so starting on the left I have sine of x plus h minus sine x all over h. Okay. So sine of x plus h is going to be sine of x cosine of h, um, same sine, plus sine of h cosine of x, and then minus sine of x all over h. Okay. And then I think I, I'm kind of looking at my goal. You know, I, I, I have this in mind is where I want to end up. So um, how am I going to pull this off? I think what we can do is, where's that sine of h? It's this part. We're going to take this part and make one fraction, and then everything else we're going to make its own fraction. So it's kind of like butterflying, but not quite. So we're going to take this part and with this part. Okay. So uh, what do we have then? We'll, we'll have the um, sine h cosine x all over h. That was that first part here that I circled in white. And then the red part will be plus sine x cosine of h minus sine of x all over h. And we pretty much got what we need, right? So you can see above, um, I'm just kind of rewriting things to get to the answer, okay? So, so you could rewrite it as, you know, cosine of x, if it's not clear, sine of h, nicely put all over h, and then the second guy. In the numerator, you can factor out a sine of x. So you get sine of x times cosine of h minus 1, <laughs> all this over h. And then you could uh, rewrite that stuff as uh, cosine of x over 1, basically, times sine of h over h. And of course, cosine of x over 1 is just cosine of x, and then times sine of h over h, which is exactly what we want, right? Okay, so plus, then, uh, what was the other one we need? Okay, so sine of x over 1, basically, times cosine of h minus 1 over h, and of course, sine of x over 1 is just sine of x. Okay, so we got it. Cosine of x times sine of h. <laughs> Sine of x times, <coughs> which is <coughs> the right hand side. And we're not. Okay. <sighs>
one more and we'll, we'll move on to something else. Um, let's make this the video quiz question. So this is for the um, second set, uh, the second question in video homework uh, set three. I'm just marking it in my notes. It's problem 52. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, let me end this. <clears throat> okay, so we want to prove the identity of the cosine of 2 alpha is equal to cosine squared alpha um, minus sine squared alpha. So, so one one issue I see a lot of students kind of wishing that uh, cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha is equal to one, and that's not right. Uh, cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to one. That doesn't mean that cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha is equal to one. No, that's not. It doesn't work like that. Okay. Okay. So hopefully I've I've prevented you from doing that in the future. I doubt it, but. Uh. Uh, so how am I going to deal with this? It's the couscous formula. So I'm going to start on the right, on the left. Sorry, start on the left. Starting on the left, I note that cosine of two alpha is equivalent to cosine of alpha plus alpha. Okay, and then you could use your couscous formula. So that's cosine of alpha, cosine of alpha, opposite sign. Um, sine of alpha, sine of alpha, and of course you got it right there. Sine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha, uh, which is the right hand side. Okay. So some of these, you know, if you're in the section on using the sum and difference formulas, so you want to find creative ways to use the sum and difference formulas in order to prove these. Okay, let's let's move on then to this last type of problem that you'll see in the book. And again, number 15, 52 was the video quiz. You just have to copy that out. Okay, uh, all right. So the next type of question, you're you're finding these particular values. So find the exact values using triangles um, and the and the particular sum and difference formulas. Okay, so first. Um, you have to find cosine of alpha plus beta. And uh, secondly, you have to find the sine of alpha plus beta. And then thirdly, um, you have to find the tan of alpha plus beta. Okay. And what are you given? So this is problem 58 from the book. Um, you're going to be given that sine of alpha is equal to 4 fifths. Alpha is in the first quadrant. And then also the sine of beta is equal to 7 over, um, I think it says 25. I'm trying to read my writing here. Okay. Okay. So part A, um, I kind of want to know cosine of alpha plus beta. In order to pull this off, uh, you probably want triangles, right? So um, sine of alpha, remember, as the right triangle definition, sine of alpha is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So if you're in the first quadrant, your triangle will look like this. Um, opposite must be this side, and then the hypotenuse is this side. It's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. You use Pythagorean theorem to get the other side, but it's 3. Um, uh, so that's the alpha angle. So I should, shouldn't write theta. Let's write alpha in there. And then um, beta is, uh, and it tells you in the book it's in the second quadrant. Uh, beta is, I, I forgot to write that, is in quadrant two. Sorry. Okay, so I need a, a little triangle picture for that scenario. So this time beta is over, it's going to be over here. And um, uh, as sides of a right triangle, I have, again, opposite is, 
going to be 7 over hypotenuse is 25 using Pythagorean theorem and noting that beta is in the second quadrant. The third side um, must be negative uh, 24, and that's also a well-known triangle type, 7, 24, 25. Uh, but you can use Pythagorean theorem to figure it out, right? So 7 squared plus b squared is equal to 25 squared. So the b squared will be um, 25 squared minus 7 squared, which of course is, uh, you know, you're taking square roots on both sides. 25 squared minus 7 squared equals 24. And because we're on that second quadrant, it has to be negative. Okay, okay. I think we're ready then uh, to proceed. Um, let me erase this junk. So part A, um, cosine of alpha plus beta. Couscous formula is cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. Okay. Uh, cosine of alpha then adjacent over hypotenuse will be three-fifths using the alpha triangle. Cosine of beta using the other triangle then is... Um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 24 all over 25. And then minus, we know sine and, and of alpha and beta, so it's 4 fifths times 7 over 20 fifths. And then you just combine the, all that junk together. Um, it was 3 times 24, 12, negative 72, uh, minus 28, over 125, 5 times 25 is 125, and then that's negative 100 over 125, and that will be uh, negative 4 all over 5. Okay, okay um, next, sine of alpha plus beta. So, uh, same sine formula, sine of alpha, cosine beta, plus sine of beta, cosine alpha. Um, so that will equal sine of alpha uh, is four-fifths. Cosine of beta is um, negative 24, 20 fifths, plus sine of beta is 7, 20 fifths, times cosine of alpha is I believe three fifths. So this time we're getting negative 96 plus 21 all over 125. And then that'll equal negative 75 over 125. So that'll be negative three over five. Okay. One more. And that's the tan alpha plus beta. Let me get rid of this junk so I have room to see what I'm doing. Oh crud, he don't want to do stupid stuff like that. Oh, great, I cut off that part of it. Okay, one last try. Still getting used to this tool. And I went off the screen. There we go. Let's remove this. There's something in the way. I can't move over there. Okay. Scroll down. Go down, please. So we'll just mark all that crap down there. I don't know why, but there it goes. Um, and then part C, we need to figure out tan of alpha plus beta. And this is one of the formulas you don't have memorized. Um, so it will be tan of alpha plus tan of beta all over 1 minus tan alpha beta, tan beta. Okay. So I use my triangles. Uh, tan is opposite over adjacent. So we have uh, the alpha one first opposite 4 over 3. Um, and then for beta, opposite is 7. And it's negative over adjacent. And then all over are 1 minus the product of those two. So, common denominator, um, so I'll multiply top and bottom by, of this guy by 8. 
So I have 32 all over 24 minus 7 over 24 all over, um, can I simplify this a bit? So 4 goes into 24 six times. So I'll have 1 plus um, 7 all over 18, I believe. And then 32 minus 7 seems like it's 25 over 24. And then 18 over 18 plus 7 over 18 will be 25 over 18. And then uh, the division of things is the same as multiplying by reciprocals. Um, 25s cancel, you know, after 18 over 24. You can divide top and bottom of that by 6, and you get 3 fourths. Okay. okay, great stuff. Uh, we'll leave it at there, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.